Ladies and gentlemen, may I please have your attention. Gather round and feast your eyes upon a spectacle that must be seen to be believed. First, nothing up my sleeves. Now, what's this in my hat? Oh, a Genshin Impact Theory. Why, how exciting. Today I want to propose a theory concerning everyone's favorite magician, Lenny. Before we begin, I'd recommend you check out my previous video on the Fontaine's overarching theme of misdirection. I'll be bringing up points that I made in that video, so it'll make this theory make a little more sense. I'll give you all a moment to pause and come back. Alright, is everyone back? Good, because while you were gone, I found this card behind your ear. How'd that get there? Fontaine is a nation full of wonder and spectacle. The very justice system itself is even treated like a soap opera, with everyday citizens reading about the events of a crime as if it was the newest episode of their favorite TV show. Surely one of the biggest stories in Fontaine's recent history is the trial of Lenny and the serial disappearance cases. For those who have completed the first two acts of Fontaine's Archon Quest, you should be quite versed in the details surrounding Farina's accusation of Lenny and the Traveler's involvement in defending the Fatus. Let me just give you a quick recap. While Lenny was performing a magic show at the Opera Epicles, he was attempting to do a trick in which he would swap places with an audience member. While the trick did succeed, a water tank fell from the ceiling, crushing and killing one of his stagehands. As evidence came to light, it was determined that a criminal organization responsible for the infamous serial disappearance cases planned to frame Lenny. But is this really the truth of the matter? As you know from my previous video, I firmly believe that the overarching theme of Fontaine is misdirection. At this point, let me just propose my theory, and then I'll present all the evidence. At that point, it'll be up to you to decide how believable it is. What if I told you that Lenny's trial was just another show? What I mean is that Lenny planned to be framed. He planned to enlist the Traveler's help. He planned to draw the attention of even the Archon herself. Why? Well, a magician's greatest ability is to draw attention to himself all so that something else can remain unseen. This is quite the bold claim, so let's check out some things that have caused me to come to this conclusion. Wait, where are they? Oh, <laughs> silly me. I simply slipped them in your shirt pocket while you weren't paying attention. But what you see is not real. It's all a show. The Final Feast is a really important video showcasing the characters who will play a role in the Fontaine arc of the story. As a preview for the new region, surely it serves as a way to foreshadow what's to happen. This line is particularly ominous. I think Lenny isn't referring to a simple magic show. After all, we see that this entire narration is really him reporting to his father. So, he must be talking about something a bit more grand. Specifically, I think he's referring to the events of the Archon Quest. This line is basically a double entendre. It's a cheeky way for Hoyoverse to foreshadow to us, the players, about the events of this new story without directly telling us. And every part of the show is carefully controlled. By choosing the right time, the right place, and the right people. To repeat myself once again from the previous video, I stand by the belief that it's no surprise the Traveler meets Lenny almost immediately upon arriving in Fontaine. Being a member of the Fatui, he and his sister no doubt have orders to prevent the Traveler from getting involved with their plans. After all, plans in four different nations have been tampered with, thanks to this outlander. By seeking out the Traveler as soon as they step foot in Fontaine, Lenny can easily grab their attention. This is a form of misdirection to keep the Traveler from paying attention to what's really important in this new nation. But when you're on the stage, you're first and foremost actors. 
Good actors hone their craft to mesmerize the whole crowd. Arla Kino all but confirms my stance that Lenny and Lynette are nothing more than actors playing out a role in this great illusion. I love Arla Kino's choice of words here, on stage. Recall that Lenny's magic show took place in the opera house, quite literally a stage. But what else takes place in the opera epicles? Trials. But is there really much of a difference in the Land of Fontaine? We've seen how their trials are performed. It's just as much of a show as any regular stage play. So Arlecchino's statement that actors play out their roles on stage is also a double entendre. Lenny's role as the victim in his own trial is literally and symbolically nothing more than another show to mesmerize its audience. Moving on from the final feast, let's look at some evidence that's actually in-game. Many of the Traveler's voice lines are enigmatic. Fontaine added a few sus lines, but there's one in particular I want to quote. Hmm. Well, they know they have themselves to blame. What do they expect staging a show about a trial in the opera Epicles? Yeah, it is a terrible idea. What were you thinking, Paimon? Wait, what? Nothing! Just what a terrible idea it would be if someone came up with that idea. Paimon has her moments of brilliance. Here, she's suggesting that it sure would be awful if someone were to stage a trial and pass it off as a show. I mean, sure, I don't mind telling some small lies to others at times, but between the two of us, I've never done anything worse than omitting a minor detail here and there, right? Magic isn't just a performance art, it's also a way of thinking. Many things in this world seem simple at first glance, but play host to all sorts of secrets if you look deeper. <laughs> so even now you still don't completely trust me, huh? You're a vigilant one. Not that that's a bad thing. I'll never need to worry about you getting duped by someone else. But on the other hand, since you've taken it upon yourself to watch my every move, you'd better be careful when you blink. Who knows? I might just tell a huge, terrible lie while you're not paying attention. Obviously, as both a magician and a fatus, lies come naturally to Lenny. The first voice line I played for you is actually confirmed in-game. Remember how difficult it was for the Traveler to get Lenny to divulge any information that would help him in his trial? If I was accused for a murder I didn't commit, I would tell my attorney everything so that we could make the strongest case for me. Yet, despite these odds, the Traveler had to keep prodding him to reveal more and more. One of these revelations is actually my next point. After pulling out a few of his teeth, the Traveler finally gets Lenny to divulge a bit about what he was doing under the stage during his swapping trick. He said that he went into the room that housed the Oratrice Mechanique d'Analyse Cardinal. He admitted that he was trying to figure out how it worked. When this was brought up in the trial, I fully expected Nouvellet to state that this was another capital offense. Surely investigating the sole authority and delivering justice in the land of justice is a crime, right? But no. The best we get from our resident Chief Justice is, how about we investigate this matter later? <laughs> Alright there, Paimon. But something else seems off about this. If Lenny was instructed to investigate the Oratrice by, say, his father, then surely that would be confidential information, right? I doubt Lenny would reveal even this much to the Traveler, unless it secretly was something he wanted to reveal. If Lenny makes the Traveler think they gained some valuable insight, especially since they had to work for it, then, as far as the Traveler's concerned, they did gain some valuable insight. You see, Lenny has the gift of gab, and he knows what makes people tick. He is a master at revealing just enough info to make you think that you've got what you wanted. And once you're satiated, you can leave him alone. Also, this was one crucial piece to Lenny's alibi. So, 
why doesn't it make sense? Why would he investigate the Oratrice during that particular moment? Why didn't he investigate it during various stage rehearsals? Or while he and Lynette were setting up the props prior to the show? Also, just how much information could he have even learned about this, no doubt, incredibly complicated machine in such a short amount of time? Remember also that Lenny claimed to not hear the thud that everyone in the crowd could hear. He claimed he didn't hear it because he was in the other room at the oratories. But this is a discrepancy. Lenny has also stated that he used the crowd's counting to help him keep track of how much time he had left to complete the trick. If he could hear the crowd chanting, how could he have not heard the thud? One of the early things we do with Lenny is help him to catch a thief. Lenny tells the Traveler to essentially cut off her escape route while he confronts her more directly. Lenny is gone much longer than he should have been, and even Paimon begins to wonder what's up. Finally, Lenny does return, and he says that she got away. How? Well, he twisted his ankle and he couldn't catch up. An expert showman twisted his ankle? I mean, sure, it's possible, but highly unlikely. Surely he also had other methods at his disposal of catching her. I think he let her go on purpose. Perhaps she's in on the whole thing too? I mean, Lillian herself is suspicious. What are the odds that Lenny would run into her before she stole a ticket to get into his magic show? Also, her seat position was the one that was rigged by the synth manufacturers to be captured. This is one big coincidence if you ask me. But I highly doubt Lenny believes in coincidences. After all, he's the one who says, And every part of the show is carefully controlled. Not only that, but I propose that Lenny is blackmailing Lillian into helping him. Pay attention to this line during the magic show as well as Lillian's body language. If the magic is interrupted, who knows where you might end up? You might even find yourself in the Fortress of Meripede. Oh, <laughs> okay. See how uncomfortable she is? See how Lenny nonchalantly threatens to send her to jail if she doesn't obey him? What if he did catch her back at that start of the story, but he told her, Come to my show, and I won't report you to the guards. So, you know how I've been claiming that the first important character the Traveler meets in Fontaine is Lenny throughout this whole video? <laughs> well, I haven't been fully truthful with you. You see, we actually speak to Lynette first. I lied. It's actually hot. But what happens? She divulges some history, masquerading as a sob story. She also mentions the prophecy of Fontaine's destruction. Isn't this strange? We later learn how introverted Lynette is. She hardly ever talks to strangers, so why did she so willingly explain all of this to the Traveler? It's because she was trying to lower their guard and soften them up for Lenny to swoop in and take over. What's the best way to get the Traveler, and by proxy us, to lower our guard? By making us comfortable. How do we become comfortable in a new and unfamiliar region? Get to know its people, and learn of its problem. Lynette makes sure that the Traveler is immediately aware of a problem in the region, and presents to them a sob story to appeal to their sense of compassion. She basically goes, Here's my sob story, Traveler. Please allow me to continue appealing to Pathos. Oh look, my brother. Finish the job, Lenny. And we all know how Lenny finishes the schmoozing of the Traveler, by earning their trust through protecting them. One last trick to dazzle us solidifies Lenny's persona in the eyes of the Traveler, positioning himself as the good guy. He asks us to provide magic pockets to poor people. See, isn't Lenny just such a great guy? We can trust him. What I'm trying to get at is this entire meeting feels rehearsed and a little too convenient. 
So, maybe this is all one big, fascinating show. So what? To what purpose has Lenny gone to all of this trouble? What is the true motive behind his farce? Well, I'll save that theory for another day, my friends. I understand that everything I've presented is nothing more than circumstantial evidence. There's really no way to prove this theory, hence why it's just a theory and not official lore. Could all of these things I talked about simply be red herrings, or just pointing to some other truth? Certainly. Still don't believe me? Well, just remember that seeing is believing. Surely the truth will reveal itself over the next few updates. Until next time, you have been an astounding audience. Have a blessed day.